So I've just read this text for the first time. I had one of my colleagues send this to me. So I do not have any previous experience with this except for the six to seven minutes that I just spent reading it. So I'm gonna do a second read. And as I'm going, I'm going to highlight and annotate a couple of things that stand out to me as being persuasive. So I'm going to click on my comment button, okay? And um, just starting through, there are a couple of things that I do remember from this first read is that this heading up here is the same um, in all five of the letters that are written in this text. So this story, um, the part that I'm looking at right now is just five letters um, from Tracy Beaumont to um, Steve, um, Stephen Jones, okay? Um, and so it's, it's about at the Innocence Headquarters in Brigham, Alabama, and it's regarding a death penalty intake department. Um, so they all have that same heading. So dear Mr. Jones, my dad has precisely 275 days before his execution. You are the only hope we have because every lawyer we've used has failed us. So that right there is, um, actually I'm gonna do highlight, hold on. That right there is a pretty big piece from what I see. Um, because every lawyer we have used so far has failed us. Um, this shows that um, Tracy is on her last chance and has tried a lot of different ways to try to help his dad, her dad. Okay. So when I'm thinking about like, well, why is this persuasive? Um, and remember our annotations can be casual and informal. So it's persuasive because she's trying to appeal to Jones's emotions and have him feel a bit sorry for her. Okay. I'm just gonna move this over here. Go back to my highlighting tool because there are a few more things in here. Um, Please look into James Beaumont's application. Okay. So even though that seems pretty simple, um, it, it definitely does have an aspect of persuasion because using the please is pretty formal, but also um, like appeals to emotion. Right, so she's she's trying to get this emotional connection to this lawyer. Then down here we actually see um, P.S. Jamal is going to college. Can you believe it? All that running added up to something. If you have those letters where I say he's wasting his time, please destroy them. Um, so this actually tells me that, that she knows this person. So they they've had some communication before. So I'm going to see if I can just highlight this entire little paragraph. Okay, let me just. So there's a personal connection to this person. Um, she's including some like non court or legal details in the letter. So she's trying to connect to the familiar side of this lawyer. The family knows them. And he may be more willing to help. Might help if I spell lawyer right. <laughs> so just within this one letter, I see a lot of different details that um, that kind of look at this emotional aspect, and there's a lot more too. So I'm going to continue reading. Um, and again, this heading is the same. The only thing that's different is the date. So April 23rd, and then we've got May 1st. So it's just a little bit later. Um, 
congratulations on the Donovan case out in California. I've been watching it progress this last year. Every time I see good news, I think you may be ready to take our case, but then you don't. Will you do it this time? Everyone in my family has given up. They want me to accept that my daddy will be killed in less than nine months. So two things in this paragraph that stand out to me. Um, one, congratulations on the Donovan case. So she's trying to um, like get on his good side by giving him praise on the work he's already done. Okay. And then the other thing that stands out to me is everyone in my family has given up. They want me to accept that my daddy will be killed in less than nine months. Okay. So the reason that this is persuasive is it puts a timeline on things. Um, and we're able to see, like she's, she's trying to show this, this urgency and without this urgency, um, we wouldn't necessarily know why it's so important and why she's reaching out to Mr. Jones, but um, she's really trying to like get him to see that this is a, a you know, a time sensitive situation and we all need to be paying attention to it. Okay, so I want him to see how time sensitive things are. Wow. See, this is where y'all get to see the backside of the, the planning process. Even teachers have typos. Okay. Um, this paragraph is actually comparing her friend to her and um, her friend's dad just got out of jail, but he was guilty of what he went in for, whereas she believes that her dad is not. Um, and then down here again, did you watch the Susan Turek interview with my brother, Jamal Beaumont? It aired today on Sunday. Um, so just popping that in there again, trying to remind her, that, uh, remind him that, yeah, you you know our family, like, you know, trying again to make that personal connection, reminding Jones that he has an actual connection, an investment into this family. Um, and then we get down here to the next set of letters, and this is only four days later. So we had May 1st, and now we have May 5th. Um, and again, the rest of it's the same heading. So, dear Mr. Jones, my brother Jamal Beaumont is on the run. The Galveston Pol County Police think that he killed a girl at my school. He didn't. He couldn't. They're blaming him because of who his dad is. The cycle won't stop. I need your help more than ever. So a couple of things that really stand out to me here is um, this line right here okay he didn't he couldn't they're blaming him because of who his dad is the cycle won't stop i need your help now more than ever uh this stands out to me as a persuasive technique because one um she's using short sentences and really showing that urgency and kind of desperation Thoughts. She's again showing how time sensitive things are. With these short sentences. It's almost like if she were to be saying this, she would be out of breath. Like he didn't, he couldn't, right? Now his, his, her brother is being blamed for a death. Um, we have to help Jamal. Every last drop of money we have, which is almost nothing, so maybe our house to defend him. This means nothing will be left to help with my dad's appeal. So here we go. Another thing. So now she's shifting and she's she's trying something new of... Um, She's, she's showing that we don't have much, but we are giving everything to this because she knows that her brother couldn't have done this. So this shows 
persuasion in a couple of different ways. Um, by saying that they will use everything that they own to defend her brother. She's showing how much she believes in him. He needs help. Okay. And this is an attempt at persuasion because if the reader, Jones, sees how sure they are that Jamal didn't kill this person, then they might be willing to help. Um, and, and then it's just, it keeps going on like this. There, there's, there's different details, different stuff going on. Um, and then in this letter, dear Mr. Jones, and so this is two days later, May 7th, dear Mr. Jones, let us realize the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. The saying is etched outside your main office. I saw it in all your photos. I got a question. Dr. King wrote this and Obama believed it, but how can it be true if it seems like everything is going backwards? Okay, so this is huge. Now she is actually quoting something that is permanently etched outside of Jones's office. So she's connecting a statement for justice that Jones claims to believe in. She doesn't see him following it. Okay. She doesn't see him following through on it. Um, this is an attempt at persuasion because if Jones sees the hypocrisy and I just spelled that super wrong. <laughs> In his actions, he may be willing to and motivated to act and help his family. She wants him to see how his inaction goes against his own values. So that's, that's I mean, this, these two lines right here is a huge shift. Um, now she's actually getting a little more aggressive. And that's actually something that we can note here as well. So this shifts to a more aggressive tone. which could evoke a different response. In this case, any response would be appreciated. All right, so she's just hoping to get him to actually respond. So by doing that, she's, she's getting a little bit more aggressive, okay? Um, and then because if people just wait long enough, laws will change. I'm not trying to be funny. I really want to know because right now I'm looking for someone to make me feel hopeful and I've got nothing, okay? So then here by using the phrase, uh, I've got nothing. C indicates that this family friend should, which who is Jones, should be there to support the 
family, but he's not. So she's trying to guilt him and help him. Okay. And then we have the last letter here. So now it's May 10th. So all of this is taking place in about two weeks. Dear Mr. Jones, 4% of defendants sent to death row are supposedly innocent. Do you think my daddy could be among them? What are the chances for my brother? It doesn't look like I'm going to get any help from you. I'm going to keep taking things into my own hands, looking for my brother, searching for Angela's killer. Okay, so this is the rest of this letter is more about um, what she's going to do. She's going to do this by herself. Um, I'm hoping you'll take my daddy's case so I can focus on this, but I'm thinking you won't. I wish you the best. I hope whatever cases you're working on come out with a positive result. Bring back somebody's daddy for me. Tell them you couldn't take my case, but I'm happy the innocent ex looks, took theirs, okay? Ooh, that is heavy, okay? Tell them that you couldn't take my case, but I'm happy the innocent ex could take theirs, okay? This is a huge jab. So this is... Um, kind of a, a, a knife in the back, or a knife in the heart, really. Um, Jones. This is meant to cause a lot of guilt and frustration, okay? Because she, Tracy, is so frustrated and she's like, you know what, bring back somebody else's daddy for me because Clearly, you're not going to help mine, and uh, he's going to die. And it's it's kind of putting the blame on Jones. This um, this really places the weight of Tracy's dad's death on Jones because he wouldn't take the case. Tracy's dad is likely now going to die. Jones had stepped in. Maybe it could have been prevented. Okay. So now we have a lot of, uh, of persuasive statements in here. And the next task that we will end up working through is going to be actually um, sorting through them and figuring out which ones have used different techniques and how can we really see them um, trying to get Jones to work with Tracy.